सहनावतु सहनाभुनक्तु सहवीर्यम करवावहै तेजस्विनावधी तमस्तु मावित विशावहै ओ Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. May the Lord protect us. May He nourish us. May we acquire the capacity to study and understand the scriptures. May our study be brilliant and may we not cavil at each other. Om, peace, peace, peace unto us all. Dear brothers and sisters, loving Sairam to all of you, we welcome all of you for the satsang of Sri Satsa Sai Baba Center of Arcadia. Before I used to use to say online satsang, it is not anymore. So we are continuing our study circle on uh, Gita Vahini. So uh, we are for the hard copy if we have. So anybody has it? We have some extra copies. We had, if not, you can get them. So we are on page nine, starting on the last paragraph. But if you have a tablet or iPhone or any other things, you can watch, uh, see the uh, soft copy, which is on page 11. So uh, that way also you can, or just uh, you can focus and listen and understand too. So uh, whatever is convenient. So, last week we talked about two important shlokas, very important, we said. Swami emphasized that. So, thus, you practice those two, that is enough. That is, that is why Swami says, there are matchsticks in a matchbox we have, we'll see 700 matchsticks. Do you know all the 700 matchsticks to light a lamp? One good matchstick is good enough to light the lamp. But all the 700 matchsticks, if they are wet, moist with uh, 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 water, none of them will be useful. Similarly, they have 700 shlokas in the Gita. So any one practiced is good of them. These two shlokas, Swami gave a lot of importance. This is in chapter 18, shloka 65 which is manmana bhava mad bhakto madhya jimam namaskuru mamai vaishyati satyante pratijani hapriyosme. Very important, they said, fix your mind on me and have being devotion to me and do my worship and do homage to me, then you will be merged in one with me. So everything for everybody wants to be liberated. What is liberation? Be one with God. So just you do this, this is it. He is giving Mahamayi Vaishyasi. And what is he saying? Satyam I am telling the truth. God is telling. And Pratijani Hame, I am promising you. I am promising that truthfully I will be, uh, you will be one with me, merged in me if you do that. Manmana, think about me, always remember me. Mad Bhakta, I have love for me. Majjaji Mamne Vasko, worship me. Then, I am truly assuring you that will be merged in with me. So what else you want? So that, that is why you need to go on thinking about it and contemplating. And second uh, important shloka is 18, same chapter, next shloka, 66. Sarva dharman parityajya mamekam sharanam vraja ahantva sarva pape bhyo mocha ishyami ma sujaha. This is also an important thing. He says, this is considered a charma shloka by Vaishnavites. That means there are some other shlokas after this uh, in the Gita, but they consider this, this is the ultimate. Once you do this, there is nothing else you need to know, nothing else to study. And, and Swami also was emphasizing 
about this sloka. What do we have to do? Sarva dharman, what we have to do and God will say what he will do. So what do we have to do? Last time we talked about it. Anybody wants to say? Sarva dharman parichajya. Give up all dharmas. Mamekam sharanam raja. Eka means only me. Surrender to me. So the only three things. So surrender to me alone. Giving up all dharmas. So a lot of commentators say giving up all dharmas, giving up all duties. That is where people give up their heart, home, family run away from home, responsibilities, go to caves, Himalayas, and do that. That is what they understand. That is completely wrong. Swami said, head in the forest, hands in the society. So you should be detached inside, but active in the world. And the example is Avatar, Lord Krishna, is always active. And Swami, till he left his body, till April 24, 2011, was always active in the divine mission. Wherever, even there's no vacation, whether he was in Uttaparthi or whether he's in Brindavan or in Kodaikanal, Mumbai, Shivam, wherever he goes, busy morning darshan and evening darshan, taking the letters from people, talking to the devotees, blessing them, guiding them. So that means you need to always be active. Here, Dharman Parichyajya doesn't mean Karman Parichyajya. People say they will give up the work. That is not work, you should never give up. Because as long as we are alive, we have to work. That is the uh, Lord Krishna says, Nahi api jyatu karma kut. No living being can live without activity. You cannot live without activity. So when means you are not active, means you are dead. When you say active, you say, Oh no, I am sleeping. No, but you are breathing, your heart is beating. So some activity is going on. Here's dharma means, Swami said beautifully, what is the dharma of fire? Burning. What is the dharma of water? Wetness. Similarly, dharma of human being is having desires. Having too many desires. I want this, I want that. So give up all your desires and then surrender to me alone. This is the beautiful inner meaning Swami gives. All the commentators say, work here says, give up your desires because all selfish desires and maamekam don't let me don't surrender to god and mammon as jesus said just surrender to only god that is why swami says mine is not a double sofa single street sofa give only priority to god and then what will you do don't you do that giving up all your desires and surrender to me alone he says ahantvatmi sarva pape bhyo Three things he will do. He will get rid of all our sins. Because why are we born? Because of our bad karmas and sins. Otherwise, we won't be born again. Whole life is to. We are born. Why are we born? So that we don't have to be born again. Not just not born to die and again to be born, again die, again born. That is like repeating the cycle. The reason we are born is so that we are not born again. So he says, so if you do this, he says, I will get rid of all your sins. Mocha Ishyam, I will give you complete liberation. And Masucha, no more grief. In life, we all have sorrow, fear, anxiety. He says, I will get rid of all that. No more sins, no more um, illusion. That then you have Mocha liberation and you do that. So for that, so what you need to do and what God has to do that. So first one. What we should do, then you will merge with him. Here, give up all the things and do that. So this we discussed last week. This is important. All of us should know that, contemplate on that, because all the great masters emphasized on that, Adi Shankara and Ramanuja, Madhvacharya, and our Swami too. So you need to focus on that. So and contemplate and practice. So I think we discuss that now we'll continue on page nine if you have the book if not page 11 starting with this dharma this dharma is not laid down or recommended for the extraordinary among men it is within the reach of all for all have the hunger for god all have the discrimination to discover that there is something 
basic behind all this change. Even the most heinous sinner can quickly cleanse his heart and become pure by surrendering to the Lord in anguished repentance. Therefore, the Lord's command is that each should pursue the special dharma laid down for him. Each person should plan his life according to the spiritual foundations of his culture. He should give up the objective vision and listen to the voice of God. Those born in Bharat should deserve the privilege by listening to the voice of the leader of Bharat, Gopala, and manifest the divinity latent in them in every word they utter, every letter they him, every wish they entertain, every thought they frame, and every act they do for the winning of gross things such as food or shelter or health. Then only can this Indian nation demonstrate to the world the excellence of the ancient religion, the Sanatana Dharma, the eternal path, its special gift to humanity, and ensure peace for all mankind. Acts in line with that Dharma alone can confer the strength of spirit, which can, which can encounter all crises and achieve victory. The sacred Gita grants that boon by indicating clearly the way. The most uh, two important things I see that is that this can be achieved by all. That's uh, because everybody is hunger for God and uh, that's a very important, I, I feel that very touching. Everyone has, a, every can, everyone can reach. And whether you are a sinner or a, or a good person or whatever, they all, even sinners, can reach him. So there's no, it's for everybody. The thing is that, just follow his words, everything, whatever he said, if you follow, follow his divine command, then we don't need to worry. There's three three important things that I learned from this reading. I'll leave it open for discussion. Yeah, last week also we talked about what uh, the Lord Krishna said. Salpam apyasya dharmasya thrayato mahato bhayat. People think, oh, I'm a sinner, I'm doing all bad things, all this, what can happen? He says, even if you do little dharma, little good things, so that God will be pleased. God's grace it is there. That's why Swami said, if you take one step towards me, I will come hundred steps towards you. And if you shed one tear, I will wipe hundred tears from your eyes. So just you need to take that first step. That is what it is, human effort. By the way, people who are on Zoom online, are you able to hear? Because all the time we are talking and... Uh, Nilesh, or anybody can text back if you're, huh? You're able to, people able to hear. I know people can hear. But I want to make sure otherwise we're going on. We don't want them to get frustrated. They couldn't hear. So that is important. Good? Okay, very good. So the, um, we are talking about it. So just, uh, um, yeah, here, it says even little effort. That's why we see there is nothing like everybody says, saint has a past. Because he has a thing and change, but sinner has a future. That means there is everybody has a future. There is nobody in God's thing. We all came from God. That is the beauty of the Vedanta. There are Semitic religions like Christianity, Judaism, Islam. They say, oh, you go to heaven or hell and there. Here, everybody will be liberated. Everybody, even uh, the ants, everything will be liberated. Because why? Because everything came from God has to go back to God. That is the law. That is a beautiful thing about Vedanta. But question of time. You want to go in this life with her? Or you want 10 lives? 20 lives? Where somebody said one Swami was telling, we want to be liberated. So why should we be liberated? Actually, we had satsang in Anupam's house. Why is it 
<laughs> so I could not answer. Yeah, yeah, you are enjoying this thing. Okay, go through that. Because sometimes as a uh, uh, camel, they say, they go in the desert, it eats the thorny, that uh, uh, bushes and eats and bleeding, it is enjoying. So if you are like that, it is okay. But if you are really like a Lord Buddha, he said, he had all the luxuries, he had beautiful uh, um, family, he has a great kingdom, comfortable life, a nice wife and children, but he said this is all temporary. He realized it, even though he had all the best, anybody would like to be a king and have a nice family, but he thought this is all temporary. He said, I don't want this, and he left and in such a fruit. There are some people, they will be repeating the cycle of birth and death. So if you don't want to be get out of it, then you need to be intense fire or sadhana. So here, what is the sadhana? Here he says, he says everybody can believe, think, manifest divinity in all aspects. What means? In thought, word, and deed. Everybody said, oh, I'm telling the truth. Truth is not just telling the facts. Oh, I'm wearing the white shirt, he's wearing So there is a fact. But real truth is harmony of thought, word, and deed. What you think, you say. What you say, you do. That's why manasekam, vachasekam, karmanyekam, mahatmanaha. Mahatmana, great soul is the one. They think, do, and say the same thing. Whereas most of the people in the world, they will be thinking something. Uh, he's, he's useless for something like that. But they will say, oh, what a wonderful thing you are doing. I mean, they will be doing. So there is no harmony. That, that means there is, they say duratmana. Those people are, he says, duratmana. If you don't want to say that, keep quiet. But don't be hypocrite. Think one thing, say something, and do something. What you think, what you say, and what you do, there should be harmony. It's very important. Otherwise, silence is golden. So that is... Uh, uh, very important. So you need to practice the divinity in thought. That means always think good thoughts. Anything we need to do self audit anything, we always human, we get sometimes negative thoughts, bad thoughts. That time you should say, hey, this is, uh, so just you should say, hey, get, rid of, get out of it. You close the door for that. Swami says you have a door in the house, we leave it open, cats will come, dogs will come, things will come, rats will come. You close the door and only open when it comes. Similarly, in the mind, you sh shut the door for any negative thoughts, bad thoughts, evil thoughts, you shut it up. Only open for the divine thoughts. And same thing, when you say any word divinized, that means you talk about God, talk about good things. Don't talk about gossip, oh, that guy is this happening. Most dangerous thing, with not divinity, is four things. Telling lies. and talking the untruth and talking about other people behind their back and doing a lot of gossip, which is not necessary for you. So you are interested, something happened, somebody, why are you interested? How does it help you? So gossip, so slander. So these are all the greatest and the excessive talking. That These are all the four great crimes done by the tongue. So if you want divinity, you should avoid all that. So truthful not excessive talking, and then no gossiping, no chatter, and be talking about God. And then in the deeds, whatever deed we do, Swami said divinity, that means, does it help people, whatever we do? How does it go into harm? If you cannot at least help, it says don't hurt, help ever and hurt never. So this is the one beauty about the Gita is, as he says, it shows the way. It is the practical Vedanta compared to other Vedantic texts like Brahma Sutras and uh, Upanishads, which are very high metaphysical texts. This is more practical. How to live in life? That is because it is given in the middle of battlefield by Lord Krishna to Arjuna. So we are all, all in the battlefield of life. So how to live that? So there is a very important message uh, here in the Gita. It is there. So anybody, because now we are meeting in person, anybody has any comments or questions or we shall go to the next thing? Okay, proceed. So anyway, because we'll finish in about 10 minutes because now the study circle, now they are made it half an hour, right? 7.30 to 8. 
so we'll uh, finish in 10 minutes. But people online who may not know that uh, change, so we'll do that. Okay, go Chapter ahead. two. Two paragraphs only, really. The first chapter is better named Arjuna Gita rather than Krishna Gita. Overcome by sorrow and delusion, Arjuna turns from war and keeps aside his weapons. He is dejected in his chariot, halted between the two opposing forces. He turns this way and that, puzzled and perturbed. He surveys the faces of his kith and kin. He is overcome by pity. His famous bow slips from his grasp. He is too weak to stand or even sit. His mind wanders into the dictates of the Purva Mimamsa school of thought. He swears his, he will not engage in fighting. When Sanjaya reported this to the blind king, Dhritarashtra, he was overjoyed for victory was within grasp. He had neither foresight nor foresight, much less the divine vision. So he felt happy that his dream of an undiminished empire had come true without bother. But Sanjaya, who had divine vision, felt, what is this insane joy which is affecting him? When the Lord is himself on the side of the pond was, how can this king's wicked plan succeed? Then he pictured to himself the ghastly consequences of Arjuna jumping into the fray. So everybody thinks in one way, but God is on the other side and we should always think when God is in that side, that is where dharma and victory is. We also talked about it. And Swami also mentions here about the first chapter, which is basically Arjuna is talking most. And uh, the Lord is not, Lord speaks only after he surrenders. So we, did, we elaborately talked this before, but um, yet Swami is starting now and uh, explaining us. Yeah, there is one thing in scriptures is always called punascharana. You go on repetition, repetition, re, uh, ruminating. That is why everything, whether you do such or something, Parayana, they do Bhagavatam, seven days, go on repeating is because we have vasanas for lifetimes, negative things to overcome them. So you have to repeat same thing like a mantra, like those two slokas we talked about. Then you get rid of that. Uh, old vasanas, Purojanma, because as long as it is there, you will be born again and again. And here, it's not Arjuna Gita. Swami is cutely changing it. It is, it is called Arjuna Vishada Yoga. You know, there are 18 chapters. First one is called Vishada Yoga. Vishada means sorrow, grief. This is a yoga. Yoga is where you can join God. How can the sorrow make you uh, join God? Actually, uh, yoga by definition is Dukkha Sam Yoga Vyoga, just in getting out of grief, always be happy, blissful. That is the sign of spirituality, we say. They say not having a castrile face or a long face, as Swami says. So, ABC, always be cheerful and always be calm. That is the sign of spirituality because there, but this here, when despondency of Arjuna, the dejection of Arjuna led him to God. Because if it's everything comfortable, everybody is happy. Then in times of distress, whatever we have, health problems, or financial problems, family problems, common good people, they turn to God. There are worldly people, they turn to somebody else for recommendation or some other help. But at least the artho, jijnas, or thati, they will turn to God for help. That is better. But ultimately, it should be love for love's sake. You have to, otherwise, it's like a business. Lord, I'll break so many coconuts, so give me this. The Swami said in Venkateshwara uh, Temple, uh, I'll give you my hair, as if he's waiting for your hair, as his whole world is, and I'll give you butchu. He says, Swami said, butchu is still, he used to joke. So we want, but one way they are getting rid of the ego. So 
You don't, this is called business. In business, what you do is, I will give you this, you give me, Lord, I will bake this coconut, I will do Pradakshinam so many times, I will do this, so you give me that. So, but it's okay, that is, instead of asking somebody else, you're asking God, who is our mother and father. But ultimately, you should be like all the great devotees, like Mirabai, Thyagaraja, their love for love's sake. They have, uh, Gopika is the classical greatest example. They don't know anything except love for God. That is the passion you should have. That is the, we need to pray, Bhakti Jnana Pradayanama, Lord, give me that kind of love. Because that is also a gift of God, to have that intense love for God. We should all, like Sri Ramakrishna, used to rub his face against the floor till it bleeds. Mother, another day is gone. I don't have your darshan. That kind of anguish, there is hunger for God, mumukshatvam. If we have, then he said, God will appear. Just he said, you need to cry only for three days. So just God will appear. But our Swami is very good. He, did, he knows we can't cry for three days. He says, you do it for 11 seconds intensely, I will appear before you. I will give you darshan. He said in 2007, Angadal Conference, verify that. So that means it shows how even for 11 seconds we can't focus. Our mind jumps here. So monkey mind goes here, there, everywhere. As Swami said, it is not only a monkey mind. What monkey mind? Mad monkey. And mad monkey which is drunk alcohol. And then somebody went and pinched it. So it is jumping all over everything. So mind, so just we can say how much we are. We quietly, we sit for a few minutes, be still. That happens. That means you need to do a lot of work. Mind jumps here and there. So that is what. Here, important lesson before conclude because five more minutes, that this is a ignorance. Dhritarashtra is a blind blind man, right? He is a blind king and the father of Kauravas. So he was always embodiment of selfishness. How, his only concentration is how my children prosper, not whether they are on the side of dharma or not. And he is so foolish <clears throat> when God is on the other side, how can anybody win? This is why beautifully Sanjaya says, Yatra Yogeshwaro Krishna Yatra Patho Dhanurdhara Tatra Sri Vijayor Bhutir Ruva Nithir Matir Mama. My opinion is, wherever Lord Krishna is there, wherever there is Arjuna who follows his command, there is success is bound. There is no question about it because always God is on the side of truth and dharma. So that's all, even in our life, it doesn't matter what people say, what people do, it doesn't care. Your conscience says, am I on the side of dharma? Then even the whole world, Swami says, against you, you don't care, you just stand for dharma. Because dharmo rachati rachita, if you you are save dharma, you follow dharma, dharma will protect us. That conviction we should have. So this guy is, is a blind king. That is why Swami used to be critical of two people, bad fathers. One is Dhritarashtra. He used to even criticize some of the devotees. You are like a Dhritarashtra. That means they are misleading their children. You go there, here, you go to America, earn a lot of money, but not teaching the character, values in life. That is important. And another one Swami talks about is Hiranyakashapa, how his son wants to be in the path of God, but he comes in the way. Similarly, there are some places, some students, they want to be spiritual, but some of the parents, they are so worldly, they don't in the come. So these are all the bad fathers. So just when somebody comes in the way of God, we should completely avoid that. But here, Sanjaya, he is a, really a sattvic, uh, person. So he had the divine vision, whereas that guy is a worldly vision. He was laughing. How can he, he succeed? And God is on this side. And those days, I can't believe that he was not in the war. He was away from the war. He could give a running commentary what is going on. That means they have talk about the live TV and live commentary. So just he could see there and just tell, oh, that's happening. And he was relating it to uh, Dhritarashtra. So see the, how the concept, because he had the gift to see from a place. So, but one thing is, this lesson is just you have to have the God on your side because dharma. 
another thing people will we don't have enough time next time we will talk purva mimamsa i don't know how many of you know the arjuna was talking about purva mimamsa that is like a karma kanda of the there is a great rishi called jaimini he brought out this theory of purva mimamsa wherein the thinking of karma kanda how to do this yajnas yagas and how which is in contrast to uttara mimamsa which is the vedantic text like upanishads on that it shows that we are brahman so we'll talk about it next um, week because time is almost up so we'll conclude here and continue next week sai ram